Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Respected brothers and sisters, anyone who's watching uh, Muslim do application, anyone who's watching any kind of uh, social media platforms in Canada or in North America or any place in the world, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon every single person of you. This is Dr. Amjad uh, uh, Qorsha. I'm very happy to be with you with uh, my episode about fixing misconceptions through Muslim do application. Just a reminder, Muslim do application basically is an application which has been designed uh, to service the Muslims in Canada and to connect Muslims together. So do your best to download this app and you will find a lot of surprises that you will be happy with, inshallah. Okay, fixing misconceptions. As you know, every Monday, I personally have two episodes, one in Arabic, another one in English. So today, because apparently many Muslims around the world, they are celebrating the occasion of Mawlid al-Nabi or the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and my program, my session basically is about uh, fixing misconceptions. So we have some kind of misconceptions about this event, this issue, this topic, this subject. And I would love to share with your respected selves some kind of the ideas. Now, uh, point number one. There is no agreed upon fixed time and no one of the Muslims for sure knows what is the exact date of the birth of the birth of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so please don't waste your time and don't make a, you know any kind of battle about uh, whether this is a fixed time or not there is no assurance about the 12th of rabi' al awwal which is today so it's not a date that is agreed upon, okay? But this is a minor issue. But this is a point. Point number two. Point number two, there is a huge debate. It's not a new modern debate or dispute. Actually, it's a very classical old one in the academic language. So it's that a new thing. So we have two big main opinions within the Islamic body of understanding. Muslims, we have two main like lines. A line that believes that it's not permissible to do a celebration. Their base actually is the following. They believe strongly that uh, the concept of bid'ah, which is innovation, is applicable on this issue, which means I will do my best in a just way to explain their point of view. This group of scholars, they say, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam did not ask anyone to celebrate his birth. And he himself did not tell anyone about the date of his birth. And he did not uh, agree on anyone who has done it. And no one has already done it in his life. And none of the companions and the Sahaba or the people who came after them, which is the Tabi'een, the followers and the, you know, those who came after the companions, they did not celebrate the occasion. So therefore, if this is a huge and great type of khair, this should has been, you know, or, or should have been done long time ago, and they should have not left this kind of huge amount of khair. So therefore, why should we do something they have not done it already? Therefore, they consider it an innovation, a bid'ah. This is the point of view. The point, the second point of view, they believe now the general idea of doing good and khair and dhikr and remembrance and use this occasion to bring the attention of Muslims and non-Muslims to the greatness of Prophet Muhammad, it's not 
uh, an innovation. No, we have a lot of indications. You can see it by the spirit of understanding many texts. I'm not gonna to discuss any specific what they say their evidence is because time is very limited. But however, I need you to know the following as a Muslim. If you want to be just, you need to know the following. The most important in fixing misconception, at least for me in my session and my program to know the following. This is a disputable thing in a minor marginal issue. It's not in the major principles of Islam. Now we are not discussing an idea like the existence of God, the one who has a doubt or disagree with the idea of existence of God, he's a non-believer, he's considered a kafir. So we are not discussing the concept of the existence of the hereafter. We are not discussing, this is called major big principles of faith or the ideas of Islam, okay? So the dispute, al-khtilaf, it's the minor issue, far'i. We call it khilaf, fiqhi far'i. It, it's not in the idea of faith and it's not in the major basic principles. And it's justifiable according to the general rule of what we have in ilm usul al-fiqh, in what we call the principles of Islamic jurisprudence. So therefore, you have the full right to reject the whole idea of celebrating the occasion of the birth of Prophet Muhammad You can, you can simply reject it and you, you have a solid evidence for that, no problem. However, because it's not something 100% because the other group, the other group of scholars, they have as well some kind of strong, solid evidence as well. So don't, don't make a fight. Don't start a battle for something accepts the possibility of disagreeing with other opinions. It's a minor and not major. It's not from the principles. It's a fiqh matter, not a faith matter. It has to do with the practical applications of understanding the text and the context and, and etc. So the idea, it is a minor issue, not a major. It's not a faith-based principle issue, but rather something else. And both teams, they have some kind of strong, solid evidences to support their stance. So if you decided to celebrate, do it and don't attack the other group that they don't love Prophet Muhammad. If you decided not to celebrate, don't attack those who would love to celebrate. This is one point, other point. Another fixing for another misconception. If we agreed with the group that they accept the idea of celebrating this time, which in itself, it's not agreed upon the time itself, but let's imagine that we agree with the group, those who would love to celebrate. Celebrating has nothing to do in Islam with making funny dances, and having mixing parties between men and women and doing some funny, crazy movement in the occasion or reading a fabricated stories that have nothing to do with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So avoid anything in itself. It's not acceptable in Islam. So please this is, don't mix things together. And the final point that I'm supposed to summarize the most important thing in fixing this misconception. If you want to celebrate, do it. But please remember that what is the idea behind the celebration? Now, when you celebrate something, it means that this thing has a value. When you celebrate something, you want yourself, surrounding people, or anyone to remember, to be aware, spreading awareness, showing the, the you know, how uh, your pride about this thing. So if you want to celebrate, celebrate the message of Prophet Muhammad. Celebrate the fact that you believe in him as the messenger, the seal of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Celebrate if you are, for example, in a non Muslim country and you want to celebrate, let your celebration be a sign of spreading awareness about this message. 
this message which was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, to help people to free themselves from slavery. The slavery of a nation by another nation. The slavery of their desires. The slavery of the dictatorship regimes to which they're torturing. The slavery of all types of, you know, dictators, powers, people against the people. So this system came to organize your life and my life. Let's celebrate spreading the awareness about the reality of this message that Prophet Muhammad came to free the people from slavery with the general meaning of slavery. He came to save and to honor women from many, many types of oppression she was suffering from. On top of them, the accusation of the original sin. Prophet Muhammad came with the message of Islam to free women and to give rights for women. They were not allowed to choose their husbands. They were not allowed to divorce. They were not allowed to have their own properties. They were not allowed to do many things in different cultures and religions. Islam came to give women all of these rights and to free them from the original sin with a simple direct to the point verses in the Quran, Allah indicated that the Satan, when he tried to whisper, he whispered for both Adam and Eve, both of them, they accepted his whispering and both of them, they sinned, then Allah forgave them. It's not just our mother Eve, no. So tell everyone around you that this is the message of Islam in the occasion of celebrating Muhammad. Because where did the value of Muhammad came from? It came from the fact that he is a prophet. He is a representative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not because he's an Arab and not because his name is Muhammad and not because he's from the decent shape of Abdul Muttalib or Abu Talib or he is the wife, or he is the husband of Khadija. No, 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 no. Because he is prophet and messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he came on behalf of his creator to give us the constitution of humanity for every single person on this planet earth up to the day of judgment. So if you want to celebrate, let everyone know about this thing. If you want to celebrate, ask yourself the following question. Am I celebrating him just by singing or making a nasheed and having some kind of sweets? No problem. Make nasheed, hear nasheed. Okay, spread the sweets, which is good, but be careful. If you are doing this and practically the manners, the khuluq, the attitude, the practical application of Prophet Muhammad on earth is not part of my life. There is a big, big question mark on the reality of being a celebrator of Muhammad while in reality, I do not in reality celebrate him because he came to be a role model for me. God made him be a prophet and messenger alive among the, pro, the, the the companions for 23 years, receiving the Quran on the span of time for 23 years. Why? To be a role model, to be a practical example for every single person of us. Am I chasing? Am I imitating? Am I on the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad as a husband with my wife? Am I following the footsteps of Muhammad in dealing with the people in the streets? Am I closing my eyes or lower my gaze when I see something haram? Am I controlling my tongue when, I, when I'm spreading the rumors or backbiting or having envy in my heart? Am I on the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad in dealing with my kids? Am I holding this kind of mercy and love for my kids and my daughters and my sons? Like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi when he saw, for example, one of the companions, he was a Bedouin from the desert when he saw Prophet Muhammad 
holding and kissing Al Hassan or Al Hussein when he told him, How come you kiss your kids? We do not kiss our kids. And in, in some narrations, that by Allah, I have 10 kids, I've never ever kissed one of them. When he replied to him and said, What can I do for you if God has taken mercy out of your heart? Am I imitating his footsteps in conveying and spreading mercy and love with my kids? Am I holding them? Am I kissing them? Am I speaking with them? Am I reacting in love and mercy? Am I donating, making the sadaqah, forgiving the people? This is the real celebration of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, on an individual level and on a human level. Let the people know about Prophet Muhammad. So Prophet Muhammad, his value did not come from the fact that he is a Muhammad the Arab person or because he's Muhammad, the, 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 the son of Abdullah. No, 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 no. His value came because Allah decided to choose him as the final messenger of God Almighty for humanity. He is the final, final, exclusively, ultimately, literally, final connection between heavens and earth. So nothing after him will come. That's it. Everything is finished. It's, it's, it's an amazing, horrible value. So he's the final. That's why we call him Khatam al-Anbiya or Rasul, the seal of prophets and messengers. He came to give a constitution for humanity. It's not a joke. It's not a peanuts. It's not a piece of cake that we are not discussing now. It's not a minor issue. If you want to celebrate, ask yourself, are you aware of this? Are you aware that this prophet, whose name is Muhammad bin Abdullah, he is the seal of the prophets, and his message, which is the Quran, contains the whole cream of the divine message from God to all prophets and messengers, because the Quran contains the core message of all previous books, because we believe that the source is one. God is the one who sent Adam. He is the one who sent Abraham, Noah, David, Solomon, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. All of them, they came with books from Allah, contains one message in terms of faith and value. No changing. Moses and Jesus, both of, both of them, they were sent to the people of Israel with one message. Worship your Lord. Prepare yourself for the day of judgment. Don't kill. Don't lie. Don't commit zina for an occasion. Don't drink alcohol. Don't eat pork. Don't attack. Don't do injustice. The same message, which was which was preached by David and Solomon, with what preached by John the Baptist, which was preached by Idris alayhi salam, which was preached by Saleh alayhi salam, Hud alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam, Noah, Abraham, Adam, all of them. So it's, it's, it's a huge thing. This person, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, came to conclude all of these messages in the final one by the will of his Lord in the Quran. So when you celebrate, are you aware of this? If you are aware of this, really congratulations. You are doing a great job. May Allah accept your deeds. May Allah help you to spread, to talk, and to apply practically in your life, Jazakallah khair. If celebration, the celebration of Mawlidun Nabi for you is just, I'm sorry, and I beg your pardon in advance. If just doing some nasheed and just doing some kind of, you know, you move your head and you listen to some nasheed while you are not even praying the Fajr on time, I don't know what to say. No comment. If you, sister, you are celebrating the maulid, while you are not wearing the hijab or praying or taking care of your kids to know their Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I hope you are not wasting your time. But this is an amazing misconception. It's an amazing misunderstanding. This is, you know, this is a mess. You are making a mess in the priorities in terms of your relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I hope by this in the final minute for me, 
by this message, I was able to convey a message of fixing misconceptions with regard how to deal with the occasion of the birth of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu or the occasion I they say or upon every single person of you please especially you know we are broadcasting from canada now we are living with a lot of non-muslims many of them they know nothing about islam many of them they know nothing about prophet muhammad many of them they don't know that muhammad came to free them from being slaved for many things in their lives please apply islam in yourself be a role model for Prophet Muhammad. Let the people see Prophet Muhammad in you before you speak about him. Then do your best to convey his message in all possible ways that you can. Jazakumullahu khayram. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your deeds. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.